Howdy, welcome to World of Rock Hounds. Today I'm going to show you how I did one of my first fossil preparations that I got from Camera, Wyoming. This is of a fossilized fish that I got from the American Fossil Quarry. So uh, let's see how it turned out. Okay, so for this piece right here, I was just kind of locking down some, uh, or splitting some pieces and making them smaller, thinner. So I have this one right here, which is, you know, it's a partial fish there. Um, but sometimes if you look, you can see um, indications that there is something else underneath the layer. So this is going to be another partial. And I like having these pieces for um, practice. Um, just because I'm fairly new at this still. Um, so like, as you can see, it's not going to be uh, full. Whatever might be in there. Um, so I'm going to use this metal engraver. Which I've actually replaced the tip with a uh, sewing needle. And I'm going to use this to kind of extract a lot of the big stuff off the top. Now, you do not need an engraver to do this. You've got a steady hand. You can uh, just do this by hand. It's not a big deal. You can use a needle like this and very carefully do that or Use a razor blade. Has the same effect. If not, I'll just uh, hair better. One thing is, you really have to be very careful. And it looks like the spine's right there. You don't want to push too hard. You have a chance of damaging the fossil just in a later. Because you push too hard, but all will happen is this. You push too hard. Um, here, yeah, that's actually a good example. I push all the way through. Okay, we're going to do that a few times. Get rid of that layer. What you get, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up or not, but you'll actually get marks in the host rock, and you don't want that on your fossil. And sometimes it can even pop some uh, ribs or pop some other bones loose that you don't want coming loose. It's gonna be gentle, super gentle. Sometimes this can, this can take a fair amount of time, but um, get the idea. You can also use a dowel pick, which I had one handy. Where did it go? Where did it go? There it is. Okay. Got a dowel pick. Same thing. It's coming at an angle. And it just flakes off. Same thing, don't push too hard. If we have a scale, doesn't necessarily belong to this fish, but sometimes I kind of like to come over here to the side, get rid of, rid of some of the excess material above it. Around it, I have room to work. I can smell the petroleum that's in there still. But again, I like having these. Uh, these extra pieces, um, they're good for um, kind of practicing, especially if you're just getting into this. And the closer you are to the fossil, the slower you want to get. 
Just because you don't want to mess it up. Now I'm sure this fish probably comes out to actually right about here. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a little bit about that. Just like that, with the just the needle tip on this metal engraver, I was able to expose that. Now I'm learning through this whole process, so I'm still learning tips and tricks for, especially around the tail. Um, once I got closer to it, um, it wasn't even so much going at, at an angle; it was just barely, very gently touching the tip to. Um, just above the fossil on the layer just above it just barely touching it because this is vibrating pretty quick so it's it's just automatically knocking stuff loose but again you have to be very have a steady hand you you could probably see like i was like sh like maybe shaking a little bit that's because i was trying to be as gentle as possible but just like that we uncovered a little little fossilized fishy yeah in a matter of time at all. So, I hope this helps a little bit. Again, you can use an X-Acto blade, you can use a dental pick, you can use a needle point. Just be very, very careful and slow. And then, of course, the process after this would be learning how to use the glue to kind of help preserve everything. Because you want to use a special glue for the fossil and then another type of glue for the actual material around it. All right, this video was actually made a couple months ago. This is like just after I got back from camera and uh, I wanted to start uh, practicing as much as I could because I had a bunch of uh, fossilized fish I wanted to get done. Now, since that was done, I've actually sold uh, several of my fossilized fish. I do have a few that were left over. I put on my shelf in front of me. So I got this one here, which I don't have a price on that one. I just kind of had it set aside for now. And then I have this one, which I actually paired uh, in. They're actually broke in half, so there's actually a crack right here. I ran through it. Uh, I used a thicker CA adhesive to glue this back on very carefully, because if you use too much, it's going to soak through, and you'll be able to see the CA adhesive just kind of like on the crack, and then it looks really ugly. So you got to be really careful when gluing these back together. And then, so for when I'm uh, using the glue for these fossils, I use the uh, ultra-thin CA adhesive. Um, Put it on like a paintbrush and then very carefully apply it to the fossil and just the fossil not the actual limestone and then i use a glue water mixture like school glue uh, or even mod podge whatever it might be <laughs> but i used a school glue mixture uh with water i forgot what the exact ratio was but i mix it with water applied to the limestone and it keeps it from getting like super dusty and flaky and then so you apply that to the limestone not the fossil and then apply the ca adhesive to the fossil but not the limestone and then for the repair that I did here, uh, this is where it uh, comes in handy to keep your scraps. Because you can actually get the scraps and you can take a file and file down the scraps. Keep the, the powderized scrapes from your, from your scraps. And then you can actually use it to make some repairs on the cracks that you... Um, like if you have the glue piece back together, you can use it for the, for the cracks and crevices. So with... Uh, yeah, for gluing it back together... It was like a medium CA adhesive, and then for the cracks and crevices, using the school glue water mixture mixed with the powder form, and then kind of just kind of very carefully applied in there. But that is how I did some fossil preparations. I'm still learning, pretty new at this still, but uh, considering that I'm new, it didn't turn out half bad. So let me know what you thought of this process, and let me know if maybe this helps you learn how to do this yourself at home. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, rock on.